As an engineer, I've let myself down. I've pushed the limits through my projects, like building the world's smallest keyboard and mouse, but there's one exception, the mini PC. So in this video, we're going to push the limits and customize this, where it's going to pack a performance of a desktop PC. I'm talking about having a full-size graphics card and power supply, and best of all, it's going to fit into this tiny package. Huh, can't even fit an entire car in there. But then again, this car is pretty chunky. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to building computers. I just use them for work and, of course, for personal research. There are several YouTubers that have way more knowledge than I do about PCs. So we're about to apply thermal paste to the CPU. You had a thermal paste spreader? Use the fucking thing. What is that? And the two that I frequently watch are Optimum and Devin. These guys build a lot of PCs and provide both informative and aesthetically pleasing videos for anything tech-related. So the exact opposite of my videos. But the video that really caught my attention was building a tiny gaming PC. Like, look at this one. Devin built a three 3.6 liter size PC with a desktop graphics card inside. That's impressive. Nice. Now you guys know I love a good challenge, so my attempt at building a tiny gaming PC is to make one smaller than 3.6 liters with a desktop graphics card. Bruh. And to help us achieving this tiny size is starting with this. Huh? Instead of using standard size motherboard with a regular CPU, memory, and other peripherals, we're going to use this mini PC in order to reduce the size as much as possible. Look how small it is compared to a regular motherboard. Now don't let the size fool you because this mini PC packs a decent performance, where it has a Ryzen 9 CPU along with 32GB of RAM and 2TB of SSD. There's also an internal GPU that can run Cyberpunk 2077 at over 40 FPS, but we won't be using it since we're going to to use an external graphics card instead. That's quite big. Now you may be wondering how this giant thing is going to fit into the mini PC. Well luckily, someone already figured this out several years ago and Linus made a video on this where he used the NVMe slot with an adapter to connect to an external GPU. Normally, you'd put SSDs and Wi-Fi modules on these connectors, but you can pretty much put any device that supports PCI Express, like this giant graphics card. But we still have a problem. We somehow need to power this external graphics card. And this is a big boy with big needs. To help us power this thing, here's a little trick that I learned in undergrad. I didn't have a proper power supply because I was a starving student, but I needed 5 volts for my electronics projects. After some quick research, I learned that you can hotwire a PC power supply by shorting these two pins. Huh? Huh. That's weird. It should turn on. Ah, forgot the switch. And voila, we have a functioning power supply. Now I lost the PCI connector cable for the supply, so we're gonna ditch all this and borrow the power from my Ubuntu PC instead. But the big question is, does our mini PC work properly with this GPU? I see it displaying something which is a good sign, but the mini PC doesn't boot properly because it doesn't recognize the giant graphics card. I think we can bypass all this by reinstalling Windows 11. A few moments later. After some painful installations and updates, I was able to put a fresh Windows on our SSD and boot properly with this big boy. But first things first. Now while you weren't looking, I've downloaded some games to test out our system, starting with Cyberpunk 2077. Huh? Hold up. Why are we only seeing 30 FPS? The RX 6750 XT should get around 50 FPS at 1080p medium settings. Wait, let's try Helldivers 2. Huh? What is this terrible frame rate? Wait a minute. Why are there so many metal pads missing for the data lines? Crap, I got the wrong adapter. Fuuuuck! So after a more careful look at the pins of this adapter, we can see that a lot of pads used for transferring the data are missing. This would be okay for slower speed devices, but this is a big no-no for graphics card, where it needs to transfer over huge amounts of data very quickly to the PC. Well, I failed. I guess this is the end of the video. Uh, well wait. There's an adapter that I can buy with more data pins than this one. Although, it still needs an NVMe adapter for the GPU, but that's pretty easy to find. Alright, let's power everything up to see if they work. And it's working! Now we're getting more than 60 FPS on Cyberpunk 2077 on 1080p medium setting, and over 30 FPS with ray tracing. And look, Helldivers 2 is now playable. Wow, all we had to do was throw money at our problems to fix them. Thanks, capitalism. So the original goal was to make the smallest possible gaming PC, approximately the size of this box. And we obviously can't do that with this giant graphics card and power supply. Looking back at Devin's previous video, I remembered he used Zotax RTX 4060, which has a super tiny form factor. So I got it for next day's shipping, and now we have our graphics card. I like this. This is cute. <laughs> the power supply was a bit tricky, but I was able to find a small PSU that can provide up to 400 watts of power, which is almost double the amount we need for our system. And now we have a problem. And it's not this disgusting looking mess on this PSU. Let me, let me just clean this off. 
Brother, uh. So the power supply can provide up to 12 volts, whereas our mini PC needs 19 volts. Doing some basic math, we can see that 19 volts is much higher than 12 volts. But the good news is, I found a boost converter which can take in 12 volts and output 19 volts. All that's left is to solder up some connections, connect everything together, and try powering it up. And I'm getting black screen with no boot up. Bruh. I initially thought that our tiny power supply was having issues, but everything boots up properly with the RX 6750 XT. Next, I tested the 4060 on my other PC to make sure it was working. After some debugging, it looked like the boot up sequence for the PCIe slot was having issues. So I bought a fancier PCIe adapter for the 4060 and tried every setting, along with changing various BIOS parameters, but nothing seemed to work. For whatever reason, the mini PC refused to boot up with the Nvidia card. I was ready to give up, but then decided to try a smaller AMD graphics card to see if it would work. And it actually worked. I have no idea why. Maybe the PCI boot sequence and device detection work differently on AMD GPUs. Maybe the AMD CPU on the mini PC is racist against Nvidia cards. Who knows? But hey, at least it works. Now there's one more problem we need to solve, and I promise it's the last one. If you're following along, you're gonna need to use the power brick that came with the mini PC, because the boost converter fails and shuts off the PC under medium to heavy load. Since we have enough room to include the original power brick, I'm just gonna be lazy and use it, instead of looking for a better boost converter. Now with all the fixes, we can finally run some games, and we're seeing well over 60 FPS on Cyberpunk 2077 at medium settings. I'm surprised it's actually performing better than our giant friend here, but then again, I'm a total noob when it comes to GPUs and benchmark numbers. So yeah. Now that we have everything working, let's try to make this ugly setup look a bit more presentable. I'm thinking we can stack the GPU and the mini PC like this so that they have no obstruction getting airflow through the fans. I also bought some plexiglass along with standoff screws to hold these guys in place. All right, let's drill some holes. Alright, time to measure. It's 8 inches by 3.2 inches by 6.3 inches. So around 2.68 liters. And it fits into our box. This is looking real nice. But it's definitely missing something. Ah, much better. Wait, what's that sound? That was weird. It's not even November yet. I'm just gonna get rid of this for now. Now that our tiny PC is complete, we're gonna finish it off with the rest of our tiny setup. If you guys remember from my last video, I made this RGB keyboard, and it was manufactured by PCBWay, who's also the sponsor of this video. They obviously did a fantastic job, as always, with my past circuit projects, including this keyboard, and they have so many options to choose from to customize your PCBs for your needs. But did you know that they also provide other services, like 3D printing and CNC milling? So if you need fast and great quality services for your next engineering projects, check out PCBWay. Link is in the description. Now you might be wondering why I have Linux on our new PC. Well remember a few minutes ago when I said we solved the last problem? That wasn't true. After powering up everything, I reran Cyberpunk 2077 on our new setup, and the performance dropped to around 30 FPS. I initially thought the temperature was the issue, so I retested the PC with everything disassembled, but the PC still showed low FPS. After some debugging, I figured out that the PCIe lane gets stuck at the lowest speed, even when games are running. I tried downgrading from Windows 11 to 10, I tested different BIOS settings and edited various registry parameters as well as disabled internal GPU, and I even tried a whole bunch of stuff on Linux. However, nothing seemed to work. The only time the graphics card worked properly was when I did a fresh install of Windows and AMD drivers, and ran the benchmarks right after. Once I restart the PC, the graphics card will always be stuck at the lowest PCI speed of 1.1. I emailed Geekcom about this, who manufactured this mini PC, along with other questions. But even with all these setbacks, the PC still works and I'm pretty happy with the size we were able to achieve. Besides, the most important thing is that Half-Life runs buttery smooth on this machine, and that's all that matters. I had a lot of fun building this tiny PC, and definitely have more plans for it later this year. We'll be 3D printing a custom case, along with making various circuit boards like the front panel with a power button. And of course, we'll make a proper RGB lighting system, because everyone knows your PC runs faster with RGB LEDs. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll also try to get the NVMe graphics card adapter and PCIe speed resolved for the next video, but no promises. Alright, thanks for watching everyone, and thank you again PCBWay for sponsoring this video. See you next time! Ba -ba. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba.